Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week's video is a real-time demo of a portrait painting of Melanie Blatt. Now the first couple of minutes are going to be time-lapsed, so I'm just going to show you the initial drawing, which is going to begin with pencil and then watercolour marker pen. A um, couple of different colours I use and then I block in the background as well with interactive acrylics. But after these first couple of minutes, um, it will be completely real time. So you'll be able to see all the different mixing of colours and also, you know, how I'm think. I'll tell you how I'm thinking as I you know, create the painting. So I don't work using a grid. I just work freehand with the pencil. Then I use the watercolour marker in blue to correct the lines. And then I'm going over with a second colour, kind of a dark grey watercolour marker pen to correct those lines further. And then when I've done that, when, once I'm happy, I've got a reasonable likeness. You know, there's not a huge amount of detail here. It's mostly just outline work. Then, as mentioned, um, I'm going to use the interactive acrylics to block in the background. And once that's complete, in a few seconds, we'll go to real time. So I've used Silurian Blue and titanium white in different proportions to block in the background. I've made it slightly lighter on the right, slightly darker on the left, and that's because the light is coming in on the sitter from the left. So the left hand side of the face in general will be lighter, and I want that to contrast against the slightly darker background. But while I have my titanium white, alizarin crimson and silurian blue on the palette, I'm going to just block in the, the shirt, the white t-shirt that um, the sitter is wearing as well. Now the, the shirt's pure white and the shadows are kind of bluey, but I want some contrast between those shadows and the, and the background. So I'm mixing up a little bit more of the silurian blue and the titanium white, but then I'm just going to add a touch of the alizarin crimson. So it's not you know, going to be exactly representative of the shadows, but it's not going to be too far out. But the main thing is it's going to be different in colour to the background. OK, so just going to spray the surface of the painting with water and a little bit on the palette as well. So these are the interactive acrylics. And my hope is I'm just going to be able to do a fairly quick and loose treatment working wet in wet. So to begin with, I am just putting in some uh, brush, brush strokes to cover the, the paper with the shadow colour. And I'm putting the brush strokes so that the, the, the direction of the stroke is pretty much in the same direction as the way that the cloth, the creases or the folds in the cloth are falling. So. So for a lot of areas I'm putting down at the moment, the colour is way too dark, but we'll deal with that in just a second. Now, if I go over the line work I've done for the hair, that's OK. Uh, I'll fix that later. So really just blocking in all the areas where I don't have to worry too much about detail. OK, so I want to keep that surface, that surface of the shirt wet. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit for you so that you can see a bit more there. There we go. Um, so I just sprayed the surface of the painting. I'm now grabbing some more white and I'm mixing that in with the colour I had already. Could almost do this with pure white actually. But there we go, I've got a much lighter blue. Again, I'm keeping the surface of the paint wet. What I'm going to do now is put in kind of the mid-tones. So And as I do that, if I leave a little gap in my brush stroke, that's going to kind of automatically create the beginnings of a shadow area for me.
All right, so I just wiped off my brush and a paper towel. Didn't clean the bristles too thoroughly. Just another spray of water to keep the surface of the painting wet. And I've add, added a fresh amount of titanium white to my palette. And uh, I'm just loading my brush up with some of that. And now I'm going to go back over this shirt, putting in some of the highlights now. And because the paint is still wet on the on the paper, even though I'm putting down pure titanium white, there's going to be some, you know, automatic mixing of the paint. So that's going to kind of soften things from being just a pure, pure white. Which, you know, in general, we want to leave that for the absolute brightest highlights. So to, and to give those the most impact. We need to be a little bit sparing with the use of our pure, pure white. So that's why I'm just keeping things a little more subdued for the moment. OK, so we've got the beginnings of the shirt uh, of the shirt in place. Now, let's see if we can use a similar technique on the hair. I've added some cadmium yellow light to my palette and some ultramarine blue. I've taken some of the white I had before and added a good amount of the, or just a little touch actually, now that I think about it, of the yellow. And I'm going to use this to begin to put in the highlight colours in the hair. Again, keeping the surface of the paper a little bit damp using the water spray. This colour is not going to be exactly right, but it should be OK for a start. That's my hope. So again, just blocking in the main areas. I'm not concerned with with detail at the moment. So the hair is very, very light here. And it's also reasonably light just on the edge of the hair here. Now, you can see that some of this watercolour marker I used um, because I ended up using a dark grey marker. That's kind of dirtying the colour that I'm putting down. But, you know, for now, that's OK. I, I don't mind. Um, we can we can fix that later. Now, as we go this way, things are getting a, just a little bit darker with colour. So I'm going to add a touch of the yellow. And just the slightest little tiny amount of the alizarin crimson. And so I really am talking about, you know, two two little tiny bristle tips worth of uh, of uh, colour there. Another quick spray with the water bottle, just keeping the surface of the paper moist. And again, not quite the right colour, but uh, we can adjust all of these things as we go. So OK, so there is a little bit of a highlight or a lightening of the hair here. So I'm just brushing in some titanium white into the still wet paint. And then as we come up here, it's almost a, it's almost a greeny colour. So I'm actually just mixing that some of that uh, blue I used for the shirt in the background into the, the yellow I've got. And we'll see what that looks like. Well, that's not too bad, actually. For the moment. So you can see with these interactives, by keeping the surface of the paper slightly damp and by spraying the paint with water, if you get the consistency right, you really can cover an area very, very quickly. So let's keep going with that. Back in, back in again with the, the water spray bottle. And now I need to mix up a mid-tone for the hair. So let's grab some more of the titanium white and put that into the, the mix I've got going already. But now I want a touch of the ultramarine blue, some of the alizarin crimson, a bit more of the blue, and some more of the crimson, and a bit more... more 
blue, touch of yellow, and we'll see we'll see how that works. Probably not quite the right colour. Keep the surface wet, or well, not wet, but just damp. Okay, not too bad. So again, working wet in wet. And you can see I'm automatically, because I'm keeping the paint fluid, I'm automatically getting the um, the illusion of multiple strands of hair created as I use this flat brush and drag wet paint through wet paint on the on the paper that you know that's already there. So you get a much more characterful brush mark than you would using acrylic in the conventional way. And I, you know I'm a huge fan of conventional acrylics. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know, this technique is something that's a little trickier to do unless you, you're you know, really going to work very, very quickly with normal acrylics. So we have the hair and the shirt and the background established reasonably quickly. Again, I'm going to take this shadow colour, but this time I'm going to add some of the alizarin crimson. And we'll see how that works for the, for the face. Again, just misting the surface of the paper. So there's a little shadow on the right hand side of the forehead and just down here to the right of the right hand eye. A little bit there as well. And then above the eye and down the or the beginnings of the right hand side of the nose. Some there around the nostril and underneath the nose there. So I haven't got the shape of that shadow exactly right, but you know it's it's just a beginning. Some here on the neck, here on the cheek, here on the chin. We can probably use this colour for the beginning of the eyebrows as well, which will further darken later. Okay, so back to my palette. Now I need to just kind of drag most of that off, most of that paint off of the brush. Come back in with some some white. Just to lighten that a little bit. I may have to clean my brush. We'll see how we go. Let's grab some more white. Add a little of the alizarin crimson. A little more. Let's see. Let's see how that works. So it's a slightly pinker color. Again, another quick mist. Now the the shadow color as we go onto the cheeks becomes a little more red and um, a little lighter. And that's what I've tried to create fairly quickly. Same as we same thing as we go down the nose. That edge of the of the shadow is a similar scenario. So 
So at this stage, I'm thinking much more about tone than I am uh, colour. OK, so we have some shadows in place. OK, so next I need to add some lighter tones to the to the face itself. So I'm starting with titanium white. Just reloaded the palette and cleaned out the brush as well. And uh, then I'm going to grab some of the yellow and mix that in. OK, so obviously we've got a bright yellow now. Now just a touch of the alizarin. So when you're adding the alizarin crimson, you really do want to go a little gently because um, once you've got too much in there, you need a lot of white to take it the other way. OK, so that's going to be, you know, a reasonable. I'll just grab a little bit of that background blue and mix that in just to take it, just to knock the, the colour back from being too much of an orange. But that's a good start for a lighter mid-tone on the flesh. Again, quick spritz with the water. Now you'll see that some of the paint is beginning to run and trickle a little bit. But at this stage, you know, I, I don't mind. Um, right, so we'll put some of that in. So, you know, for the most part, I'm filling in the gaps of white paper that are still showing through, but I'm making little corrections as I go again. But, you know, things are still fairly approximate at this relatively early stage in the painting. So using a, you know, it's not a massive brush, but it's a reasonable size brush compared to, I guess it's a big brush compared to the size of features that I'm painting. So, you know, there's no way I can do super fine detail um, around the eyes, for example. But in a way, that's a big advantage because it stops me getting too fussy too earlier. And I'll, I'll use a smaller brush later, but um, for now. We're, we're good. So what we're trying to do here is just create the illusion of three dimensions on a two dimensional surface, you know, as as with most, not all, but as with most paintings and drawings, or at least most of the ones I do. And that's why I think about tone first, because it's really the tone which does that more than the colour. All right, so we've all, apart from the eyes, we've pretty much covered the, the paper now. So once again, I missed the surface of the paper, just grabbed some titanium white and mixed that into the, the skin tone that I put down a second ago. And I'm just going to go round again, still fairly wet in wet. And just pick out a few more highlights. So I put down a kind of a, a mid-tone within the highlights, I guess, just a moment ago. And now I'm putting down a lighter tone into that still wet paint. Now I'm still, I've still got some of the watercolour marker showing through and kind of mixing in, which is kind of dirtying the colours a little bit. But, but you know, once this first layer of paint is dried, um, that won't be too much of a problem. So I need a bit more white, so I'm just adding that to the brush.
Having cleaned up a little area of my palette, I'm now going to grab some ultramarine blue and a touch of the alizarin crimson. A little bit more. So that's that's given me a pretty decent dark purple. I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow in there just so that it's closer to being a brown. And again, you've probably guessed, <laughs> quick spritz of the water bottle. And what I'm going to do is just add some darker shadows into the hair. Get a little bit more blue and alizarin in there. Let's make the paint a little bit thicker. And then that same colour for now uh, will suffice in terms of the shadow inside the mouth. And then I've still got that dark colour, so I'm going to add some more of the yellow. Oops, hit the hit the blue then by mistake. Okay, so added some more of the yellow, so that's kind of given me a, a a deep green. Some more of the alizarin to hopefully bring that back towards brown or a redder brown. There we go. That's not too bad. So we will pop some of that color in here. Now for the irises, uh, we have brown eyes in, in for today, um, so I'm just mixing up some of that blue and a touch of the alizarin into the brown I've already got. And I'm definitely not interested at this stage in doing you know, anything in terms of detail, but I just need a dark colour for both eyes. And now I finally switch to a smaller brush. This is a little filbert, a little flat but round brush. I'm grabbing some titanium white, a touch of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use that to fill in the white of the eyes. I'll do the same colour for the teeth. And when it comes to the lips, I've just grabbed some alizarin crimson and mixed it into that dark blue I had, and then just a little touch of white. Uh, again, at this stage, I just want to get some paint down. Now that colour's um, you know, too dark for the lipstick that's actually uh, being used. So just grabbing some of the alizarin and mixing that in with some of the very light blue I've still got on my palette there.
OK, so reasonably quickly, we've got the painting blocked in. I'm now going to let that dry completely and then we'll see what it looks like once everything's dried. So having let the paint dry, I'm now going to start working on some some details. So beginning with the right hand eye, I've got a mixture of burnt umber and titanium white here. And then I'm just going to add a little touch of yellow to that. Just using the flat fill, or the little filbert, I should say. So making the iris somewhat lighter on the left hand side than the right. And then added a little more titanium white to that mixture. Because this eye on the left is, you know, really, really exposed to the incoming uh, daylight from the window. And I can actually, you know, I can add a touch of that on the left hand side of the right iris as well. And while that paint is still reasonably wet, I'm coming in with pure titanium white. Just put a couple of highlights in on the eyes. And then I need to lighten the white to the eyes in certain areas. So if you remember, I used ultramarine blue and white to block those in. And I'm going to go with the same mixture, but with rather more titanium white. And so the areas of the whites of the eye, which are facing to the left, are rather lighter than I have them at the moment. So we can just use some of that. And what you know, while I'm adding this colour, I'm also just refining the shape of the eye wherever I see you know a little correction is required. And with that colour still on my brush I'm actually just going to add a few little highlights to the to the face. And these won't necessarily be the final, final highlight colour. But again, it's just about gradually refining the image. So I try as best I can to work fairly evenly around the painting. And these interactive acrylics, you can see I'm using my finger here and there to lift off a bit of paint where the brush stroke has gone a little wayward. Uh, they do wash off your hands rather more easily than conventional acrylics, so, so that's another little advantage. Now, while, again, while I've got that uh, 
mix on the brush on the palette I'm just adding a little more of the ultra ultra marine blue to the so I've got a, a darker color again and there's a little bit of a kind of reflected blue highlight on the on the face here and a little bit down here under the lip and I, you know it's not quite the same color but I, I wanted to kill that bit of um, underpainting that I had there I can use this same color again it's not quite the right color but perhaps a little bit of extra ultramarine blue just to correct the shape of the nose which um, the tip of the nose has been a little lost with my with my brushwork from earlier And sticking with the same brush, but this time with pure ultramarine blue, I'm going to just refine the, the eyelashes a little. And a little flick here, just to suggest, you know, that uh, they're lifting up at that point. And the left eye in particular needs um, an adjustment of that upper lid. And I'm going to use this same dark blue colour to just kind of do a little extra drawing with the brush to give me a little bit of guidance for later. And some of these blue lines I may end up leaving in. Uh, I quite like the way it looks. But, you know, it's all about being reasonably um, restrained, I guess is the word. You don't want to, you know, don't want to overdo it. But uh, a few little touches of li uh, line drawing with the blue, I think works quite well for my particular style. And so with that in mind, um, I'm going to head down to this nostril and fill that in in deep blue. And I'll do the same for the, the eyebrow, actually, for the moment. Perhaps not for the whole brow, but just for those darker regions within the brow. Now, the left eyebrow has lost its shape somewhat, um, so I need to correct that because it's much more rounded at this end. And it's somewhat thicker than I've painted it in so far. And then for the uh, for the partly open mouth, once again, I'll use the blue. So, you know, for the now the, the corners of the mouth really help uh, capture expression. So we need to pay attention to the angle of the line where the lips join. And then I can use that blue for some of the inner part of the mouth, you know, where there's deep shadow. And I can use that same colour to just refine the outline of the teeth. So at the moment I'm just noting that I need to adjust this uh, upper lip quite a bit in a minute.
Now for the for the lips, for the sort of the mid-tone, I've simply picked up a bit of titanium white and some of the alizarin crimson to mix up this kind of reddish pink. And I'm going to use this mid-tone colour initially to, as, as just mentioned, to refine the shape of this upper lip. Because it actually comes across here on the right hand side at a shallower angle than what I have at the moment. And I think, I don't know whether yeah, my drawing might have been wrong from the get go, I can't remember. But when you're working in a fairly loose style as I have been up until now, you know, it, it does happen where little bits get lost or mo unintentionally modified. So I'm just reloading the brush, same, same colour, same colour, nothing's changed. Now this part of the lip on the left needs to come up higher. And then it's got to get the shape of this bit, you know, reasonably accurate. So So it's starting to look a little better, still a little bit of modification required. Let's do follow on down to the, the lower lip. OK, so I need to I need to trim the upper line of this top lip here in a moment. But before I do that, let's um, go back to the palette. So I've got my let me just grab a little water on the brush. I've got my alizarin crimson mix here. I'm just going to pick up a touch of that ultramarine blue from earlier. A little bit, a little bit more of the alizarin crimson. And let's try that as the beginnings of a shadow colour on the lips. And that's not really dark enough, so um, some more of the blue. I've perhaps gone a little too, yeah, I've gone way too strong there, I think. Maybe not, maybe not. Let's see what that looks like. That's not too bad, actually. Okay, so we'll stay with that colour and there's a little, little line of shadow along the bottom edge of the top lip. There's a rather broader shadow area on that left side of the, of the top lip and then I could do with being a little lighter than the way I'm painting it but, but this will suffice for now. So that's not too bad. And now for the highlight colour on the lips, I've simply mixed up uh, some white with the alizarin crimson again for the moment. There are other colours in the highlights on the lips, but again, it's about trying to be reasonably efficient at this stage. And, you know, I can control how bright those highlights are, not just by the colour I'm putting down, but also how heavily I push the brush down onto the paper. But you can see the lips are beginning to come to life a little bit now. Now, once again, once I've got that colour on the brush, um, you know, I'm just mixing it in with the darker purple that I had from before. Let's grab a bit more of that blue. And I think that's going to be a reasonable colour to use for some of the shadows around the eyes. So let me add some of those in. Because I need the, the face is a little bit too yellow at the moment, really. So I need to add some some reds in there. I'm 
and that shadow could do with being a little a little bit more blue so I'll probably leave the the mark I just put down for now but uh, let's put a little bit more blue in there so I've got that line of ultramarine there I'm going to leave that but adjacent to that I'm going to put in a larger region of shadow And some of that same colour I can use down here, under the chin. And just to the right of the nostril as well. And then we've got blue eyebrows at the moment and yeah, they're not blue, they're not this purple either. But let's uh, create a little bit of a mixture of colours in the brow. And then that same colour I've got starting to dry a little bit. So I'm just going to um, spray the palette with water. That's going to extend the life of the paint on the palette a little bit. I'm just going to pick up a touch of titanium white, a little bit more, and maybe even some more actually. And then we'll use that for some of the softer shadows uh, which are present. So let's see what we've got. So if we start with this eye, a little bit in there, a little touch there. And you have to be careful under the eyes, but in this case, I think it's necessary to just define that edge of the eye a little. And then for the nose, this colour is hopefully going to work reasonably well. Not too bad so far. I need to add some more highlight down the bridge of the nose. But before I do that, there's basically a line of lighter shadow coming down there. Up under the brow. Under the eye. Here next to the hair. Maybe a touch here as well. And then across the top of the cheekbone. And then just refine the shape of the nose a little. All right, so I'm going to leave the face for the moment and I've switched back to my larger brush, flat brush, got some pure titanium white, but, you know, hardly any water added. And I'm just going to work fairly quickly, you know, um, boldly 
on this shirt, adding some dry brush marks on just to add a little texture because the light really is beaming in uh, onto this white t-shirt. And so I'm hoping that I can bring out some sense of light fairly efficiently by applying the, the paint in this dry brush manner. So, so dry brush, if you haven't come across that before, as the name implies, you've got relatively little paint on your brush, but it's also more about the amount of pressure and the consistency of the paint. So you get these sort of textured brush marks if you just kind of let the let the brush move fairly quickly and lightly across the surface of the page or the paper, I should say. OK, so that's probably enough for the moment. Now, there's some kind of design on the shirt, which I probably want to include just very, very loosely. But before I get to that, I want to add some more highlights to the hair. So same dry brush technique, probably the lightest part of the hair is actually in here. So that it is almost white in my in my reference. And that's going to allow me to refine the edge of the face here, which I definitely need to correct uh, in just a little bit. And then a few little wisps of uh, hair in the you know being caught by the light very strongly. And then having done that, I could probably put a little just a little touch up there as well. Oh, sorry, you're, you're off. Uh, you're off camera. So I've just at that little touch I just did was up there, so it's not not very much. And now, um, still with that undiluted white, I'm going to take a touch of the cadmium yellow and mix that in, maybe a little bit more. And what we'll do is using the same kind of thick paint dry brush technique. Put a little line of highlight in there and some down there as well. And then having done that, now it, seem, it seems weird to say, but there, there are hints of green in, in the hair. I mean, it's a pretty subtle yellowy green, but it is there. So I've just added some ultramarine blue, not very much. And uh, I'm going to brush that in. Just kill that bit of white paper that's showing through. And you see, I'm putting on quite a light colour, but because I've got this dark underpainting, if I if I do it fairly lightly with the dry brush technique, some of that dark colour is going to show through. The next colour I've mixed up is kind of this same purple again with the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson. I put that into the what was left over with the white and added some of the cad yellow. So that's going to be kind of a light brown colour uh, and there's plenty of that in the hair. It's kind of a light browny grey I guess. And you know this won't be as dark as it needs to be um, in places here along the edge of the, the face but for the moment what I'm going to do is just use this colour to refine the outline of the face on the left. Just try and get that correct. And also what I'm doing at the same time is I'm just hiding some of those dark grey watercolour marker lines that were still visible. And what I'll do in just a moment is I'll darken those shadow areas that I've just put in, in, in for the most part but I'll also be adjusting the, uh, the colour of the skin as well in certain areas. But uh, once now that we've done that, I can kind of 
add in a little bit more of the hair. And then bring some of that same color in here. And there's even a little bit of that colour up here on top as well. So again, it allows me to hide the little the little gaps of white that are showing through. Next, I take a pretty much 50-50 mix of the ultramarine blue and burnt umber and I'm going to use that to darken some of the areas up around the hairline here. That's probably a little too dark to be honest. So what I'll do is take some of that color I had before and mix that in and see, see what that gives me. I think that's going to be a better better option let's see it's a bit more like it still not quite what I would desire but uh, So use that same colour for some of the shadow areas in the hair. And this, this area here is actually much darker than I've got it at the moment. grabbing a little water on the brush and going back to that lighter color I didn't really didn't really clean the brush but back to that lighter hair color I used so I've got kind of a mix of the dark and the and the mid-tone here now all right next um, I want to add some more colourful highlights to the hair. So I'm grabbing a, a lump of the titanium white and a touch of the cad yellow. Now that's something I've done already but I just feel I need to come back and do some key areas. So we'll come down here, up here, a little touch there, a little touch there. And then this area here to the left of the cheek is very, very light. As mentioned earlier, I don't really think I had it light enough before. So we'll add to that as, as I'm doing right now. And then hint at a few curls of hair here and there. And then the highlights here are actually a little uh, more yellow, or maybe even a little orange, really. So I've just mixed in a little more of the yellow and a bit of uh, alizarin crimson. And to be honest with you, this, this orange is going to be way too, too strong, but 
I like experimenting and seeing, you know, maybe, maybe it'll work. And I quite like that, that effect actually, so we'll keep going with that. Okay, now while I've got that colour on the brush, let's grab a lot more yellow and mix it in. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm not going to go into you know, crazy levels of detail on this t-shirt, but just want to hint at the presence of a design. So there's a bit of yellow, it's kind of a rainbow that's on the shirt. So there's a bit of yellow there. We'll grab a bit of the alizarin and mix that in. Because there's a red next to it and there's a little bit of red down here and then really I you know I need a, a bluey green so I'm going to take a bit of a risk here and just dunk my uh, dirty brush into the um, silurian blue and just kind of put a little burst there and there and then there's some lettering which I'm just going to ignore for the moment Back to my little filbert brush, and I'm just using that orange that I mixed up and kind of mixing it in with the lighter colour I had. And let's see if we can make that work on the on the face. So I think we could do with a bit of that here. And here. A little touch there, and that's warming things up quite nicely, actually. The, the colours in the face were perhaps a bit cold before. Now, um, yeah, let's put a little touch in there. And then, do you remember I said a while ago I need to refine the shape of this top lip? Well, I'm going to try and do that now with the same colour. It's not, it's not major, oops, not major surgery required, but uh, it does need a little adjustment. So. Basically, this bit here was up too high. So I can also use this reasonably dark colour to kind of further refine the shape of the underside of the nose. So that's worked reasonably well so far. I'm going to keep that going up here and just introduce a little of that onto the forehead. Perhaps a touch here on the jawline and on the neck. Okay, now that same colour I think if I mix that with a good amount of white, that's going to work reasonably well as a good pale highlight tone. But we'll see, we'll see. So let's try that on this part of the eye. Yeah, that's not too bad. The eyelid. Now the lower lid of this right hand eye is actually the wrong shape at the moment, so I can use this highlight colour now. Oh, actually, I say, actually no, it's not too bad a shape now that I look again, but it does just need a change of tone. The light's catching that lid quite strongly. Yeah, that's helped things quite a bit, I feel. Um, so let's keep going with that. So I can use that same highlight colour here and here as well. This shape needs refining a little bit. 
and the, the outer edge of the forehead and then this cheek and then I definitely need to put this colour in here down here as well. Just realised I mustn't forget to do the teeth in a moment. Yeah, and I can use some of that on the neck too, down here. And then I think, uh, let me see actually, let me see. Yeah, let's just grab a bit more of white, kind of mix it in with what I've, just with what I've got on the brush, so I'm not adding any extra. Paint. We'll just add a few little licks of a highlight colour there, there. On the nose down here, just on that bit. This bit here on the lip. under the lower lip, just to the left of the mouth. And then I think I can pro I think I'm going to be able to get away with just hinting at the lower teeth, bottom teeth, I should say, with a touch of that color. That's worked reasonably well. Now, the, there's a tooth here on the upper jaw, which on the, on the right, I can hint at that with the same color. And maybe even in here as well. But then I need to lighten the colour. But I'm going to use that same colour. Just going to add. So I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm just going to add some more of that titanium white. Let's go over here to a clean bit of palette. A relatively clean bit of palette. Let's see if I can. And then while so when I now I look at that I can see things you know not too bad but I need to just lower the line of that upper lip before I do that though I'm just going to grab some pure burnt umber and the corner of this um, right hand eye needs to be way darker. And that's that's better. That, that works better. So let's go to that lip. I just grabbed a little bit of alizarin crimson and mixed it into that kind of purpley colour I had from earlier. So what I'm going to do is that in there and then come down here a bit and that's you know it's not perfect but it's closer to to the way the mouth is um, I think I can even add a touch of that in along there now I just want to add a few finishing touches. So I'm taking some pure titanium white and I'm just squinting at the reference and seeing well where are the absolute lightest areas. So there is, it's very light, not thick enough, paint's not thick enough. It's very light there and just on the end of the hair there. It's also very light Maybe 
just a touch there. It's a bit of artistic license, that bit. Um, Uh, now I'm coming back with uh, pure ultramarine blue with just the slightest touch of of white. I just want to add just a little bit of shadow, but not too harsh a shadow down that side of the face. So there we go, there's the finished portrait painting of Melanie for episode three of season two of Portrait Artist of the Week. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.